Okay, we're back. And you're thinking to yourselves, hey, we've talked about bushings already. Why is he talking about bushings? Sorry, I, I just noticed my eyes go looking up. I wasn't rolling my eyes at you. Uh, actually, right now we've got some pretty strong wind outside and a storm's coming in. So I hear the wind and I look up because we had, uh, in this area, we had a lot of trees come down. Uh, we were out of electricity for probably 30 something hours and then came back on and we lost it for another six or seven hours. So you can imagine, I, I hear the wind blowing and I get kind of panicky here. But anyway, let's get back to this. We're going to get back to our bushings here. And you're thinking, why is he showing bushings? Well, the reason I'm showing bushings is because we can actually use the bushings uh, as a seal uh, and we can use it uh, as a way to direct fluid. Um, I don't know if you guys got a chance to look at it or not, but uh, when you're working on your Turbo 350, the pump itself, the pump um, cover, well, if you look down inside, there was three bushings on the inside. And the odd thing about the three bushings is that uh, the top two bushings, or the ones facing uh, uh, most forward, uh, were used to direct the fluid uh, going to the cooler. The bottom two bushings uh, used uh, the bushings as seal to direct the fluid down the shaft. So bushings can be used and are used as seals inside a transmission, believe it or not. Okay, now here we come down to some uh, more terminology here. We go back to those uh, gaskets again. And uh, there's two different kinds of gaskets that we have out there. Um, and, and really, it's, it just kind of comes down to what they're doing. Uh, but what we have is we've got what's called hard gaskets and soft gaskets. And, you know, if I said, you know, what's a hard gasket, you might choose a metal gasket. And that's true. Uh, but uh, really, the definition is, and I'm going to get the exact definition here. I'm going to look over the screen. It says, hard gaskets compress less than 20% when tightened in place. So if you think about it, a valve body gasket is a hard gasket. It's, uh, it's, it's very uh, lightly compressible, uh, just like your pump gasket. So when we tighten that into place, it, tighten, it, it, it uh, compresses less than 20%. So here we go. Now the easy definition, what's a soft gasket? Anything that compresses more than 20% uh, when tightened into place. So a lot of pan gaskets uh, and things like that are considered soft gaskets. Uh, even though, uh, you know, honestly, a piece of paper for a valve body gasket is soft, it's not considered a soft gasket because, uh, it, because of its compressibility, okay? Um, so here's a couple examples if you guys don't remember what they looked like. Uh, there's our pump, pump gasket right here, and here's our uh, valve body gasket. So those are, those are hard gaskets. Uh, here's another hard gasket. This was on a Turbo 400. This was the uh, uh, this is the servo piston cover inside the transmission. It was actually a piece of metal, and then it had like a rib going around it that the rib kind of got uh, tightened down against it. So that was a hard gasket. And then again, a couple more soft gaskets as a pan gasket, maybe, and or you know something similar like like cork or something like that. Um, again, it can distort. And then we've also got, I think we talked about that when we were talking about transmission services. We've got some really high quality lifetime gaskets. They are very expensive. These are probably 40 to $50 for a gasket, but they're, they're, they're basically metal on the inside, rubber on the outside with a rib on it. They also have uh, washers that are built in so that we cannot over torque uh, those gaskets and damage the gasket itself. We still can damage threads if we over torque it. So I'm not telling you, you know, to get your impact gun out there and start wailing away on these things. Uh, they will, you can damage like uh, your, your case itself and things like that, but it's not going to over torque or put too much pressure on the gasket because the metal washers uh, eliminate it from, from actually uh, over, over, torquing the gasket or over compressing the gasket. Let's talk about snap rings. So we've got snap rings here. Uh, snap rings are used throughout the transmission uh, for a lot of different reasons. Um, we use them uh, not only for retaining purposes, but sometimes uh, some manufacturers like in a, in a clutch housing, 
we'll use it to set the proper clearance for the clutches so they'll have thicker or thinner uh, snap rings. And if you notice, sometimes uh, this snap ring here, just looking at the shape here, it's not designed to use a uh, pair of snap ring pliers. You actually use a flat blade screwdriver to take that thing out of there. Here's a good example of where you're going to use that. You can see these little notches right here. This is the top of the direct clutch housing uh, where the intermediate roller clutch is uh, on your Turbo 350 and you cannot, the taper is the opposite direction, you cannot get a pair of snap ring pliers in there. So again, you're going to use a screwdriver. Uh, you're also going to use a screwdriver down inside uh, to get these snap rings out of the inside of the housings. And again, a good thing to do is to just grind a little notch in the edge of a cheap screwdriver. And it works really nicely to get those, uh, those snap rings out of the housings. Um, you know, like for on yours, the uh, low and reverse clutch um, had the snap rings in the housing that you had to get out. So really handy to put the notch in there. We have uh, internal uh, snap ring pliers. Uh, and so internal snap rings, excuse me. So the internal snap ring... This is not an internal, this is an external, sorry. External snap ring here. Notice it's, it's perfectly round on the inside where the uh, it's going to go around the outside of a shaft. Okay, and then you're going to use the uh, your typical snap ring pliers that have the round uh, ends on it. Uh, we could also have a snap ring that uh, fits in and holds like maybe possibly a gear in place. Uh, this is another good example of where we'd use uh, an external snap ring. And then we also have an uh, external snap ring here, which is like the one you would normally have on your Turbo 350 if you were working on, if, you, if yours would have had that snap ring in there. And notice the pair of pliers that, that you would use are actually specialty pliers. Uh, they're actually designed just for that snap ring. So when General Motors came out with that transmission and that snap ring, um, the manufacturers came out with a snap ring plier just for that. And it has come in handy for not only that one, but for other transmissions similar to that. Then we've got a really strange looking one that's called a spiral style snap ring, such as this one. And Ford uses it on the E4OD. It actually winds around and around, almost like a spring. And again, you would have to use a flat uh, blade screwdriver to get that off of there. And then here's the internal snap ring. Uh, this usually is uh, used to uh, hold a, uh, a valve inside a bore. So sometimes in valve bodies, sometimes in uh, pumps, you will have a, an internal snap ring. And notice now it's round on the outside here. And so to get it out is you'd use your snap ring pliers and you would actually pull these two uh, ends together which would make that smaller diameter so that we could remove that snap ring. Okay. Okay, uh, we're going to get back. This will be another uh, video, video separate of itself. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, what kind of what makes a, uh, a transaxle. I know I put a couple videos out already where we talked about uh, the Toyota. You guys watched the Toyota video. And then also I took apart the uh, General Motors... Uh, a 125C transmission and I kind of mentioned the way it was cut a little bit differently but I've got a few pictures and we'll just continue on with this in just a moment.